everybody, it's Lori here with My Crafty Mind for You. And today I'm going to be making vintage envelopes. I got a swap going on. This is the paper that I've chosen. I am going to be using this Spellbinders Designer Series. It's the Wedding Collection by Amazing Paper Grace. I went ahead and I pre-cut my paper to save time on the video. We're just going to run this through the Platinum die cut machine from Spellbinders. Um, if you have a big kick, let me just say this particular die set will not fit in your machine. You need a wider one. So that's the reason I'm using this machine. Now, keep in mind I am cutting two papers at a time arm there because so I've had a problem with this before taking off and it wants to run across the room sometimes and it cut nice okay so this is what the envelope die cut looks like hope you can see that we'll just stick this over here get rid of my die cut machine Step to the side And uh, the reason I cut two is because I need one for the inside and one for the outside. So I want to have a liner for my uh, envelope here. So I will show you how to do that. So what you want to do is it already, you won't be able to see it, maybe this way you will on the white side. It has already given you the little um, indentions where you would fold. So you're going to go ahead and fold your outer envelope. Just like so. Should look like this. Okay. Now this one we're going to have to do a little bit of trimming because it's going to be too big for the inside. Actually, got to be folding it in the opposite direction. And there we go. So, we want to have our insert. And the reason I say we're going to have to cut it, because you'll see that when you fold it, you're going to have this little bit of an overlay. So we're going to be trimming just a tad off of each side, actually just off of the closure side, and I'll show you. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so what we're going to do, I should have mentioned this first, is we're going to glue this top side first before we cut anything. Reason being is because you don't want this side to have a shortage, this side you won't see. But this side you will. Let me give you an example here. You can see this, I've started working on some vintage envelopes already. These ones were embossed. They're just regular cardstock. All I did was tea dye them. Started working on one that has a little bit of a more fancier little closure. And this one was embossed also. Dry embossed and then heat embossed so it's a kind of a glittery really pretty look and I'm not finished with these ones yet I'm still working on the decorative part of these and that's what the inside looks like so what I was trying to show you the difference here is if I can find it and this is trial and error you can see here on this envelope where I accidentally glued the bottom part first, so I don't have that gap on the bottom, but I do now on the top, so I'm gonna have to put something there to touch that up. Whereas on this one, it's completely sealed and you can't see the outer layer. So, let's get back to where we were. 
And I was liking using the Fabri-Tac glue only because it is a wet glue, but it's not so wet that it leaves things runny. But I, it wasn't gluing very good for me. The edges, and I don't know if it's because it was embossed, were kind of lifting. So I had to go back in and touch them up with the Tombow Aqua liquid glue or the tacky glue. And I like actually the tacky glue for that. So what I'm going to do is just apply all around the edges of my envelope closure. And then I'm going to lay my insert down so that it matches up. I want it to match up perfectly. Okay. And if you have a bone folder, a popsicle stick, anything like that to spread your glue, because you're going to have some excess that's going to come out. You don't want your envelope to be bumpy and all the wet glue showing on your beautiful envelope. I want to have some baby wipes handy. Excuse me. surface glue here. I'm try napkin will work. Okay. So now that I've got my top part complete, now I can focus on my bottom part. And I'm going to fold them I'm going to glue the center and then we're going to work on doing the trimming of the bottom portion and the sides. Okay. I'm going to get those pressed out really good. And don't worry, that's not going to mess up any of your scoring marks for folding or anything like that and it is the vintage look we're going after so it doesn't have to be perfect and precise as far as folds and bends and well vintage is supposed to be old looking right pretty but old looking so here we go so we can um, either give that a few minutes to dry or we can go ahead and start working with it and i will go ahead and start working with it since we're on camera Looks like this one I'm not even going to have to do too much to trim or cut. Just a little tiny bit. So I'll bring my trimmer over here. Lift up my back fold. And I'm just going to trim off a little, 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 little bit, like not even a, maybe, maybe two millimeters, if that. And you're going to see that that's a little shorter, but when you fold it in, it's going to match right up. Okay. And you're not going to see it anyway if you did make it shorter and it didn't work out. So we'll go ahead and glue that one down. And be generous enough with your glue so that your envelope isn't falling apart for the person you're sending it to or the swap person that's going to be using it doesn't fall apart on them. Glue goes a long way so don't be cheap with your glue and you'll appreciate that in the end when you don't have problems. Okay. So, looks like we don't have to trim any of these edges off. Looks like it actually was a pretty good fit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to glue these ends shut. And 
and on this top part you do want to go all the way up to the end but not on the long part because this will not go all the way up and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you've got to leave room to put your letter in there, right? So my hands are a little bit sticky. It's the same baby wipe. Get some of that excess glue off of there. Make quite a bit of a mess here. That's okay. And get my bone folder. Let's see. Let's see where I put my bone folder. And push some of that glue out just in case we have a little bit too much. And we did. But that's okay. Again, we're looking for that vintage look. So we want it to look old. Vintagey. That's what vintage is, right? <laughs> Shabby. And let's see, what I should have done was I should have just gotten an old cloth or paper towel. So an old cloth would be great. So now we're going to let this dry just a little bit. Or we can also take our heat tool and just dry away. And you'll be able to tell if you feel any dampness in the paper. You'll be able to tell when it's dry. It'll kind of stiffen up and harden just like cardstock. Okay, so there's our envelope. And now the fun part. Working on the decorations, edging it, giving it some color. We got your little daubers here. But since this is colorful, I think we're gonna go with maybe this um, Gina K. And it's the wild, oh, I should get my Wisteria ink cube. These are the miniature cubes. Okay, we'll start a new one. I don't think I have that one there. Just gonna ink that up. Put some color on our edges. Start looking something like that, giving it a kind of a um, faded inky look, blending it right into the envelope, and you get that highlight kind of looks like. I like to do the inside just a tad. I got to thinking about these uh, vintage envelopes that we're making. And I got to thinking about the days back when, um, I don't know if y'all ever watched that episode of Little House in the Prairie, uh, you know, the Ingalls family and all them. And I got to remembering their packages that they had on the, the show there. And they weren't quite as pretty as what we make for vintage, but uh, I think we took vintage to a whole new level. <laughs> Decorating it and whatnot, right? Just making it look shabby chic. So I think back then they would have probably used like a paper bag kind of craft card -ish kind of thing. And I'm going to give it some color here on the folds. Just to give it some interest. Maybe take my dauber along the fold there. Kind of blend in that gray with this wisteria, wild wisteria. Okay, and I'm gonna go in right in here. I don't know if you can see that where it's kind of white. I'm gonna go right up in there and I'm gonna try and get this in there as much as possible. I doubt anybody's gonna look in there, but I know it's there and it's gonna bug me. All right, now the fun part, decorating. So I've made it a point to just take a few things out of my collection of stuff to decorate with. Now, being that this is already all floral, yeah, and it really looks vintage already, um, 
I skipped the part. Um, I don't want to overdo it because a little bit sometimes is just what it needs. A little bit sometimes is a lot. And sometimes too much can overdo it. That's what our envelope's looking like. I think we got every section covered pretty much. And we'll try again, we'll put this back. And time for the fun part. So here we go. So what I like to do is start with the back first because the front part is going to be where you're going to put your label for your recipient, unless you're giving like a thank you card out and you're gonna hand it to them. Um, so this one here, what I did was I created the little label for the front and haven't decorated the back and I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do on this one. Um, on these ones, the front was already so glittery and pretty. I didn't do much here yet other than emboss, dry emboss and then heat emboss. But I did decorate the flap cover where it's gonna seal. And what I intend to do is my recipient can either glue it down herself, she can put some tape, or I thought of putting a piece of maybe a dot, a Velcro dot to where that would seal kind of like a little closure in case she doesn't want to send it off and she wants to use it, say, in like a journal. So we're supposed to make six of these. The smallest size envelope we can make has to be two and three eighths inch by three and a quarter. The largest three and a half by five, which is what we're making right here, a three and a half by five. Okay, so let's just see what we got here. We got some vintage little pictures that I uh, pulled off of the... Um, they were free on the internet, and I don't remember the website. It's been a number of years that I've had these, and I just, well, it's kind of neat. Um, kind of vintage -y. I thought they were really cute. So, let's see. Well, that looks cute. Maybe we'll use a butterfly. Let's see what we got here. That looks pretty, too. I don't know. Because I will be putting one of these little guys, or these little gals, I should say. That white looks really pretty. Let's see. So far, these are my two. Oh, that blue. Hmm. This is going to be a little testy here. I think that looks cute. I might be liking this white one after all. And here we've got quite a few more choices. And it doesn't have to go that way either. Hmm, might be a little much. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Sorry guys, I didn't plan this out because I wanted to do it right along with y'all. Let's start up with some, maybe we should start up with some uh, bit of ribbon or something decorative here. Some kind of beading. May or may not use that, we'll see. Let's see what other pieces we have here that are cute and dainty. We've got this. Might be able to run that along the border. Or I could run it along the envelope closure. Sorry, my hand's in the way. This little brown girl with the pony. Horse. That looks cute too. I don't know guys, this is so hard to decide. Oh my goodness, I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. 
too many images. I should have really limited myself a little bit more. Hmm, do I like it there? I think those are too big. I really like this glittery flower because I can always put a center in it. That would look really cute. Looks like the manufacturer put that beat just a little bit over to the side too much, but that would look so cute. I think I have a piece, I sure do, that I can cut here to my left, one that is not messed up, because I really like that little flower. I think that's what I'll do. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue that piece down. And this is when I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac. Uh, you know this stuff. It's a sticky mess. So, better move all this stuff aside. And this stuff is just like molasses. It's so slow to come out. I'm just going to be generous with this glue. I don't want it falling apart on my swap partner. And I have found when you just kind of roughly slide it, you don't get all those strings. A lot of people seem to have a problem with this Fabri-Tac. They get strings everywhere like webs. So I have found to push it into my project. I like that. Yes, I do. All right. And don't get any webs on me that way. Close it up right away and that way uh, my glue won't be spurting out everywhere. Let's see. Hmm. I also have some little bits of lace that I could use. Make it a little shabby. I really am liking this blue. I wish I had a smaller one that I would have done in blue. I probably used up all those ones. Hmm. Well, this girl looks nice here. And then we can put some beads on the bottom. What do you think? Hmm, just curious, just curious. Make sure I've got this running the right way. Okay. So what you could do is spread this out. Get your fabric tack. I can get it open now and glue the center of this fabric. Press some glue in there. Just kind of hold it for a couple seconds. Put my lid back on. There we go. And I can always manipulate this and trim it if need be to give it some more little edges. Little flower. Turn little bonnet girl. Now you want to make sure and not glue your envelope shut in the process. That would not be good. This is really good. I love it for fabric. Their fabric ain't going anywhere with this stuff. First of all, where I'm gluing my flower. Do I like it? And I think I like my pearls sitting right there. So I'm going to leave the bottom two unglued. 
and glue the top three. But I don't want them glued down to where they're stiff and they're not flexible. I'm putting a generous amount on the petals, but I'm not going all the way to the end because I want there to be some flexibility to these petals. I sure hope you can see that all right. So far, this is what it's looking like. And I really do like that. I really do. I think I'll open this up. Well, maybe not. I kind of like the way that's just kind of freely flowing. So the big decision now is what we're going to put here. I really do like this lace. It reminds me of a little purse. Maybe we should save that for the front, put beads in the back. Let's see what we got here. Gaudy. Wow. A little loud. <laughs> All right. Let's see, Lori. What you gonna do? What you gonna do, Lori? A moment of truth. All right. Got here. Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty. I like that, guys. I really do. I'm sticking with that one, I think. This is really shiny. It looks cute. But I think it's too wide. So I'm thinking we're going to go with these pearl strands here. That will look really pretty if I did two rows. Well, give it a shot. Let's see what it looks like. How about the front? Come back to the back here in a minute. What are we going to do with this front? Because we gotta remember, we gotta leave space for the labeling of the names. So. So far that's what it's looking like. Still not done. Oh, a little crooked. Let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. I really do like that. Okay. So it is. I'm going to cut this directly in half, which will give me a little bit of room to play with at the very end.
back to my Fabri-Tac because this is fabric and I'm going to run me a bead just along the bottom there. Press into it. You don't get the webs when you do that. And make sure I got my right side up. Lay down my uh, trim. Let that dry before I chop the ends off, and then we'll singe the ends with the lighter so that they don't start to unravel. This is what I was thinking putting two rows. Now, mind you, I'm still going to be putting one of these little gals here. So I don't know if that might be a little much. Yeah, it might be a little much. I think we'll just stick with one. And if we decide to change our mind here in a minute, well, that's what we'll do. I think we're gonna take this little blue bonnet gal. She's cute. Because, or the horse, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You know, I could always um, go over these edges with a little bit of blue. I'd like to get that blue pop. Because see, there's no blue in the back. It, there is, but I mean, it's hiding, you know. And I want to bring that blue into this. I think that'll really make it pop. I think that's what I'll do. I think I'm going to take this might turn purple. Well, we'll use the horse since it's got vintage photo on it already. Move these vintage envelopes aside. Get back to my Gina K. And these little cubes, I like them because they're so handy. I normally would be using my Distress inks, but um, this Blue Lagoon, let's test it on this little tissue. Pretty close. All right, so we'll use this and we'll edge her up. rid of some of that vintage photo and there we go I think that looks quite nice hmm not quite the blue that it is here when I went over the brown. Looks more like the green, but it does bring that green out. I don't think I like it. All right. Back to this one. I think we're gonna stick with her then. And, you know, I think I'll try one of these in a lighter shade of blue which would be Ocean Mist. One moment of truth. Well, it's about the same. Doesn't look much different than the other one we just did. I think we'll stick with this pink. And then I can put that might be a little much. Hmm, well, let's get rid of this ends here first. Let's seal those off with the lighter. Careful not to catch your paper on fire here. Just to seal off my ribbon. Might want to 
do that to these edges here. So we'll start fraying. There we go. I think that's looking quite cute. Okay, what else we got here? a little angled a little bit different than I like her to be. So how about this one? Oh, here's a pretty one. She's looking in the mirror. This one's hair is blowing in the wind. This has got that vintage touch to it, looking in the mirror. And I think she just might be the one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's glue her down. This is exactly what I was talking about. See how that fabric tack just starts pouring out? You may or you may not be able to use it depending if it dried or not. Yeah, we can't use that. But we're gonna pop that right off started to get a little bit dry. Give it a good shake. And we're going to glue the floral petal to the little postage stamp because that's what these are. Little vintage postal stamps with sticky fingers. And then we'll glue this back part to the envelope. I think I'll use the Aileen's Tacky Glue for this one. So it's paper. Your envelope still opens. It does. So you get the gist of it. Um, just uh, trying to make it look shabby. Oh, what if we put this on top? Oh, there. What do you think about that, guys? Ladies. Ah, my arms are going in a strange direction. I think that looks nicer or without what do you think with or without I think that's gonna be too much so I think without is best all right so there's our back but what about in here do we have something we can put in here and I had some steam in somewhere handy, but I don't. Um, I might come back and add that in there. And then again, maybe not because this isn't a flower, it's actually just a lace. All right, so I think we're done with the back of our vintage envelope. Now we've got to figure out what we're going to do here in the front. It's so pretty, we don't want to cover that. We could do one of two things. We could leave this as it is and let the swap partner put a label of her own liking to from however she'd like to do that. Or 
we could, well, I think when they run the mail, I think they run it through the bottom. So I don't think we can put anything there. If anything, it would have to run along the side here. Ah. Let's see what I got. I have some trimmings, paper trimmings. Let's see what we can find in here. Also have this. I think I used this on one of the others already. But this is also pretty. Let's see. Let's see what we got in this basket. Kind of subtle, soft, I like that. Got some bows. I think I'm liking this here. Yeah, I think I am liking, I don't know if I put that in the camera, in frame. Excuse me. I think I do. Yes, I like this one. All right. So we will mark it. Lori, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I do know what I'm doing. I'm going to hold this and I'm going to cut. Now with this one, I'm going to go ahead and still stick with this Aylin's Tacky Glue. It's clear, clear gel. Only because... I don't want to use double-sided tape. Sometimes, depending on the temperature where these are going, that double-sided tape doesn't seem to hold too well. I've had some things pop off that I've received or that I've sent out. Before I send them out, they're popping off, and I'm not too fond of that. I don't like sending somebody something that it's going to have a problem with. You know what? I'm going to take that right off and I'm going to give this a little bit of a pink. I should have done that first. A little bit of a pink edging. And it didn't dry. I put plenty on there, so. So there's our front so far. She can always put her from label here if she's even going to put one, or maybe she's going to put a full, a full front label, which I do have, but I don't want to mess this beautiful front up putting something like this on there. So I'm going to leave this alone as is. Now I might put a floral. Let's see.
<laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just kind of changing my mind here. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, let's see. No, too much. All right, Lori, we've got to come to a close here, so. Oh, that's cute. Brings that out. Little peachy color there. Oh, no. I don't know, ladies. I don't know. That blue dot. Let's take a look and we'll see how that looks. So we can always, if we don't like it, we can always put it back, right? We're not obligated to use it. Oh, the joys of crafting. Not knowing what you're going to do, just doing it. Joy, joy, joy. Do I want it like that? Or do we want it like that? And I think if we want it like that, where did my little gold piece go? I think I'm determined with this gold and I don't even know what. No, Lori, it does not look good. Get it out of your head. <laughs> okay. Out of my head. You know what, guys? I have this little packet here. I hadn't even remembered about this. Oh, look at there. That's cute. Dainty. Cute. But the pink is blending in. That's where I'm having the problem. The pink is blending in too much. So. All right. So this peachy color I was thinking was going with this color here. Now this is not peach, but it kind of more or less kind of looks a little on the peachy side. And it does go with our little stamp here, but I think I'm really liking the yellow. There's something about that yellow. it up I think all right now I'm getting serious I'm standing up guys <laughs> I'm standing up and the flower is getting bigger <laughs> all right I'm going with that I think I like it I have finally found what I like all right so here we go you are Fabri-Tac. There we go. So, get our peachy one in there. Salmon, whatever color that is. Some more blue. Our little yellow. Yeah, I like that. Oh yeah, that's the one. Yep. That would be the one. Fix my little flowers back here. Seem to have gotten a little bit twisted, but that's okay, because it's vintage, right? Alright. Okay, now I'm going overboard. 
Now I'm going overboard, Lori. Now you're going overboard. Am I? Yes, I am. Take it off. Take it off. All right. So I believe this is going to be it for this envelope. Again, we want our flower to flow freely in some spots. Let me stick her on there. Make sure that we've got these little petals. They're not gluing down. We don't want them to glue down. We want them to be able to, to look like a real flower and lift. We don't want it all stuck in there. So before it dries, be sure to manipulate your flowers to your liking. Okay, you can pinch them up. Twist them and pinch them, however you like. So they look more alive. And they don't look like a flat sticker. So there she is. I think that makes me happy. Front and back. So there's my vintage envelope with my liner. Now it'll be up to her how she wants to close that. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Again, in case you're Wanting to know the die cut that was used. Envelope. The envelope frame is a six and a quarter by seven and a half almost. Again, it's from Spellbinders. It's the design series, The Wedding Collection by Amazing Paper Grace. Now this lady that does Amazing Paper Grace does fabulous, fabulous crafts with her die cuts. I fell in love with them. I fell in love with her channel. So there we have it. There's my fifth vintage envelope. And I'll give you a quick look at all of them. I have a little vintage stamp on this one. A little bit of... Uh, actually, this came from a 12 by 12 sheet. that I just happened to tear off. See that? So don't throw your don't throw your pieces, ladies. Save these little pieces. I know people say, "Oh my gosh, you're saving this little piece." But yes, because you can make a bow out of them. Look how cute that is. And my tea dyed insert this one I'm still not done with. Not sure yet what I'm probably going to run another strand of beads here. And this one's got a tape measure. I'm still working on this one. Three little dots. I love, love, love how the back of this came out. And this was just hand cut. I thought, well, I'm going to do something different. And I did not use the, um, the die cut on this envelope. So this was a little bit more tedious, more time consuming, but I love the look. So, and here is the fifth one, or first. So here we go. Yeah. Embossed, double embossed, dry embossed, and then heat embossed. This is just embossed, and this 
shine. I don't know if you can see that as well as the shine that's on here actually was this Nouveau mousse, this Nouveau embellishment mousse in the colors gold and doesn't say what color it is but it is like a, um, well, let me open it up, like a creamish kind of color. Now, if you have some of these, I've had these for a good three years, and they go a very long way. Uh, every once in a while, just, you know, get a little spritzer and spritz some water in there because they will dry up. And if they dry up, don't throw them. Just spray a little bit of water in there. I should probably do that now. And just shut it and the next time you're ready to use it it'll be there and all I did was take a paintbrush and brush this on this one all I did here after I embossed it was I got the Versamark and just slid my pad across it and I did my 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 what well, was this color um copper I did this copper one shook it off of course and then I did my gold on top and that's how I got that double effect all right ladies gentlemen all my artsy crafty friends thank you for watching this video tutorial on vintage envelopes I am not the first person to create a vintage envelope I sure there are plenty of videos out there I know that our craft swap group put a link but I did not watch it I wanted to just do something out of my own imagination so maybe now that I've done this I'll go back and watch and see what that one was about but I really like the way these are turning out and thanks for watching and doing this one with me had a lot of fun have a great day don't forget if you like this channel to subscribe share it with your friends and as always happy crafting have a wonderful day